Hello and welcome to the Luke Lunchtime Takeaway. Week by week we're going through Luke's Gospel chunk by chunk and looking at some of the, the sayings and the uh, key claims of Jesus as he heads on his journey to his cross and his resurrection. And the issue we're dealing with this week is why doesn't Jesus just overcome all kinds of evil and suffering now? Why doesn't he just sort it out now, here and now? That was a question that often crossed people's minds in Jesus' day because they lived under the Roman Empire. Um, the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, had been colonised by the Romans and they were oppressed by them. And the regime was hated uh, by the people of Israel. And they longed for the, that day of um, oppression to cease and for them to reclaim their freedom. And some of them heard Jesus talking about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And they began to think, is this the man who is going to drive out the Romans and, and give us our kingdom of Israel back? Is this going to be the day when, when all the suffering is over and our oppression ceases and, and we have a new beginning? Do you know, I think today there are people who are longing for real and massive change in the world, who really want to see some drastic things change who are very worried about the future and want to see someone who can give them real answers. And some of the religious leaders of Jesus' day um, came to him and asked him questions about his kingdom. When is this kingdom going to come? And Jesus answered them with these words. The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Now, Jesus is saying God does not overcome evil by some violent political revolution. He builds his kingdom gradually. And when he says the kingdom of God is in the midst of you, what he means by that is two things. First of all, Jesus himself was in the midst of them. He was moving around among them and teaching and performing miracles and so on. But they were busy rejecting him. And one day, he would be betrayed and rejected and crucified, as he told them would happen. Uh, and on that day, he would look weak, incapable, pathetic as he hung on his cross. And it would seem like the Roman Empire had triumphed over him. But by his death, Jesus defeated death. And he overcame the power of Satan and evil. And through his death, he began his kingdom of redemption and change and transformation of people's lives. So that's the first sense in which he said the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. The second meaning is that his kingdom comes into our lives when we become Christians. Uh, we come to trust in Jesus uh, we come to know him, to surrender to him as our king, and his power gets to work in us to change us. And we are transformed by his power and grace across the whole of a, a lifetime as we travel on our journey towards eternal life. We come to surrender to him as king, and he becomes the, the king of his kingdom in our lives day by day. Now, that doesn't look dramatic or spectacular, does it? Uh, it, it doesn't look impressive to people around us, but that is how the kingdom of God is built. That is how Jesus is building his kingdom now in time. It is gradual. It is step by step. It is one by one as his kingdom extends and it's growing on all the continents of the world. What we have to understand about Jesus is that when he became a man, that was only his first coming into the world. He became a man and he humbled himself to the lowest place uh, and he came to be rejected and to be crucified. But when he comes a second time, it will not be like that. Jesus has died and risen again and returned to heaven. He's ascended to his father's throne in heaven and he has told us he is coming again. And when he comes again, it will be in power and glory. He will come and every eye will see him. And then he will overcome all evil. Then he will end human suffering. And then he will bring everything, all of us, into judgment. Listen to these words of Jesus. 
For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. When Jesus returns as the Son of Man in glory, every eye will see it, every continent will know about it. All of us will realise immediately that he has returned. And Jesus uses two very Old Testament stories from the book of Genesis uh, as analogies of that. The first of those is Noah building his ark. And uh, Jesus says, do you remember how G Noah was building his ark and everybody laughed at him? They were all having their parties. Uh, they were getting married. They were having a great time. They saw Noah building his ark year after year and they just laughed at him. But then it started raining and the floods rose and the whole world was deluged. And those who did not seek refuge in the ark, they died. The other analogy Jesus uses is of Lot and his wife and his family. Um, they were in the uh, city of Sodom and God had warned them that because of the evil that was going on there, um, he was going to send down fire and sulfur, burning sulfur, to destroy the city and they must get out. And so Lot listened to God's warning and he and his family got out. Genesis says that his wife turned to see the fire descending on the city and she was turned into a, a pillar of salt. And Jesus says here, remember Lot's wife. It, it's a really big warning. And the interesting thing is that when Jesus alludes to both these stories, to Noah and to Lot, he treats both of them as historically accurate. They really happened. And we should take his word for it. He should know as the son of God. Now, if they needed to take God seriously, then so do we. And Jesus says that when he returns, it will be equally sudden. People will be going on their way. There'll be building sites with buildings going up. There'll be weddings happening that day. There'll be all sorts of things that were just planned and carrying on. And people will be partying and all the rest of it. And Jesus says those who have trusted in him, those who have surrendered to him as their king, they will be waiting. And they will be saved. But those who have ignored him, who have rejected him, they will be taken away in judgment. He uses this phrase, one will be taken and the other left. In that day, all human sin will be brought into judgment. My sin and yours. Every one of us are going to have to answer to Jesus in that day. He will come to end all human suffering and death and the curse of sin. All of that will be rolled back in that final day and he will make a new heaven and a new earth. But he will judge us and he will separate between believer and unbeliever. Jesus has come to warn us of that day. He came the first time to make it possible for us to be saved. He came as a humble, suffering servant, willing to die in our place ready to purchase for us the eternal life that we all need. And he warned us that he is coming again and every eye will see him and one will be taken and the other left. We need to be ready for that day. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again next time.